Hello, everyone. Welcome to Health Talk. I'm Evelyn Hatfield. And I'm Vicki Graham. Today we have a very serious topic, um, yet very interesting. We have here with us today Lydia Torch, who is with the Act Sexual Assault Services. We'd like to welcome you today. Thank you for having me. Okay, can you tell us uh, first to start off a little bit about what you do at the Sexual Assault Services? Sure. Um, I'm the director of the ACTS Sexual Assault Services. As you said, we're also known by the name SAVIS, which stands for Sexual Assault Victims Advocacy Service. And we provide services to adults that have been sexually assaulted um, or adults that have come to us who have been molested as children. Mm -hmm. We also provide services to youth um, age 12 and up who have been um, victims of sexual abuse. Okay, okay. So as you can see, we're talking about, as I mentioned, a very serious yes. topic, and that is sexual abuse. So you can you tell us, um, what are some of the effects of sexual abuse? Well, um, we work with two categories of people, the, those that have been sexually assaulted and those who have been sexually abused. Um, so I can say for those who have been sexually abused, it really depends on what age they are. But if they're young, um, some things that you might start looking at is if they come to you complaining of stomach aches mm -hmm. or they're um, wetting the bed far past the age where it's a normal part of, um, part of being young. Um, if they're avoiding certain people or if they are um, afraid to go to certain places, um, that would be the time that you would start to ask questions of them because they're exhibiting these symptoms. As far as sexual assault, um, you know, when someone has been sexually assaulted, there really is no right way to be a victim. Um, some people present perfectly normal. You would never think anything of it. Some people present as very angry or very depressed or, um, you know, they, they show p symptoms of PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. So it can be, you know, there really is no way for any particular person to, to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talked about some of the signs, such as bed wetting, and mm -hmm. perhaps I'm assuming you're talking about younger Yes, kids. that would be for younger ones. But, you know, we've had 12-year-olds um, that suddenly start wetting the bed. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be, you know, a red flag for me. I would suggest to the parent, of course, to... First, take them to a um, your primary care physician to have them go th go through any testing that they think might be relevant. Um, but beyond that, if there is no physical reason why that would be happening, then we we might start looking at possible sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, what you've described, I'm assuming that some people have a hard time reporting that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. um, sexual abuse and sexual assault are are two very very much underreported crimes. And for lots of reasons, um, with sexual abuse of children, oftentimes they don't say anything because it's a secret between them and the perpetrator, and the perpetrator has groomed them into keeping quiet. Mm -hmm. So they might say something that, um, something like, don't tell because no one will believe you, or don't tell because it's our special secret. Um, and also, it's, it's a very private thing when someone touches you in an inappropriate place. And so, you know, kids don't really talk about that stuff. Even when they hear some, a program at school or a church or something, they aren't necessarily going to come forward just because they've heard the information. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and for, se for sexual assault, a lot of the crimes are not reported because we do a lot of victim blaming in our society and we're always looking yeah. at the victim mm -hmm. to tell us, well, what did you do? to bring that on. So we're talking about mm -hmm. what were you wearing? Where were you? Have you been mm -hmm. drinking? Were you with someone that you don't know? So it's been part of our society for a very, very long time that before we look at the person who's doing the crime, we're looking at the, you know, the, the person who's a victim. And what I find alarming about that is it's one of the few crimes where we do that victim blaming. You know, if if a yeah. man if a man or woman's walking down the street and their wallet or purse is stolen, stolen, we don't say to them, "What were you doing there? Yeah. Why were you carrying money? Right. Um, you know, where did you have nice clothes on?" We don't say anything like that for that crime, but for sexual assault, we 
our immediate instinct is to say, what did you do to bring that on? Mm -hmm. What might be a reason um, why an adult might not say anything? Um, aside from victim blaming, okay. it's, it's um, some people might feel ashamed. They're embarrassed. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an assault, but it's, we as a society don't openly talk about sex you know, very much, so it's uncomfortable for people yeah. to say that they were violated in such a private way. And um, some of them are, they know that a lot of people that do report it have to go through that long process of the police interview, the forensic exam mm -hmm. at the hospital, the follow-ups with the lawyers and the court cases, and it can go on for quite some time and some people just don't think that they have it within them to do that. Okay. You know, we often think that when there's a rape or there's a sexual assault, that it often happens to women. Is that the case, or is it, does it happen to men as well? Statistically, it is more common for it to happen to women. But something that we're finding at our program is that men are coming forward and saying that they have been assaulted as well. Oh, okay. So it happens... Um, Sometimes with a, a young, a young man or a teenager, say who has an older friend, or mm -hmm. something in the locker room, or so, so, some kind of hazing incident, um, those are the things that we're hearing about. Is stuff that happened to um, to young men in the, you know, in a place where they should feel comfortable and safe. Okay. But it is happening. The numbers aren't aren't nearly as high as for women, but I think m as time goes by, more and more men are feeling comfortable with, with coming forward to say, this has happened to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a question I would have, is that men might under-report more than women because of Absolutely. just the gender bias? Absolutely, because I can't tell you how many presentations I've done where the audience says to me, well, that's silly, men can't be raped. And, um, it's it's just not true. I mean, we have people coming to us for services. We have you know people in the in the um, public arena like um, athletes or politicians or things that are you know men that are coming mm -hmm. forward and saying this has happened to me it can happen to men. It's nothing to be ashamed of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because rape is not about sex. It's about power control. Mm -hmm. Control. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit more about that. Because when, when you think about rape, you typically think, they, yes, they force themselves on that person, but mm -hmm. that power and control is something different. Yeah, rape is, and you know, sexual assault is rarely about sexual gratification. It's about having power, like I say, power and control over someone else, someone who's weaker than you, mm -hmm. someone that you can't control, either with words or with physical violence. So it's it's... It's almost like um, domestic violence in that it's about power and control. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what should someone do if they were inappropriately touched or raped or sexually assaulted in any way? What should they do? Well, first of all, I have to say if they do have questions about it with that, what should I do, then I would, of course, suggest that they call our hotline, which is 703-368-4141. Okay. And they can talk to someone who's on staff or a volunteer for our program uh, about what their options are. So if that happens, there are a couple of options. They can um, choose to report to the police, obviously, which means um, there will be interviewed and there will be a, a, a detective assigned to the case. Um, they can, from that, they would go to the hospital and have the forensic exam and uh, DNA evidence is collected there. Um, but it, but some, some people don't choose to report. They would rather mm -hmm. not report. They would mm -hmm. rather just have the exam if they can. So, and that's, mm -hmm. of course, okay as well to get the exam and, um, and not report it to the police. Do you all provide support to them? Do you actually go with we them? We do, absolutely. We do. Um, okay. If they call us and let us know that they're on their way, then we can meet them there at the hospital but we have a contract with Sentara Woodbridge and they call us when a victim shows up at the hospital and we're there, okay. um, we're contracted to be there within one hour and we sit with the victim throughout the process of the forensic exam and it, it's a lengthy process, it can be anywhere from uh, 
I think the shortest I've seen is two to three hours, up to five or six, depending on okay. upon the evidence that needs to be collected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if someone, and Vicki, you can feel free to jump in here <laughs> at any time because you know me. Um, if a person calls, they decide to call you first, mm -hmm. what is that typical telephone call like for the individual who's calling in? Okay. Well, first of all, they don't have to call us first. That's just, okay. to, if, if they want to, that can help you know, we can ease their mind a little bit about yeah. what the process is going to be and also assure them that we're going to be there from A to Z, beginning yeah. to end, we'll okay. be there. But uh, generally when people call, they're hesitant because we are mm -hmm. strangers over the phone, mm -hmm. but we are trained to help someone speak out loud the words, you know, I've been assaulted. Okay. So we talk to them about um, if they are going to report to the police that they they understand that they don't take a shower first, they keep their clothes on, they don't change, um, perhaps even write down any particular details that they can remember. Because since the process is so long, mm -hmm. people think oh, I should shower first and make sure yeah. I can last through the next 24 hours or I you know, change my clothes so I look fresh. And, um, and uh, we wanna discourage them from doing that because every everything that changes from the original assault makes it harder to collect DNA evidence. Yeah, and I'm sure mm -hmm. people are quite emotional and, mm -hmm. at the time and so... You know, it's, it's about half and half. There are some that call okay. and you would think they were telling me that they um, just had lunch somewhere and mm -hmm. you know, it just, it's not, it doesn't sound like a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said earlier, however they present is normal. Uh -huh. um, but the other, the other end of the spectrum is, yes, they are in crisis and they could be crying and screaming and, and very, very upset. Not necessarily still at the scene, but yeah. just calling, reaching out, saying those words can be difficult for people. Okay. But like I said, we're trained and we, we, can, we can help them get through yeah. that. That's interesting that you say people present in different ways mm -hmm. because typically you know, we see that any way in almost any circumstance mm -hmm. that when you think somebody should be traumatized by something, they may be traumatized, but right. it's, it's a different reaction, outward reaction exactly. to it. Exactly. So, so we're careful to tell our volunteers and our staff members that we don't, that we reserve judgment and we mm -hmm. don't say, well, they don't look like a victim mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and they're not behaving like a victim, so it must not be true. You know, so we yeah. want to we want to make sure that everybody understands that they can be you know right. fully you know they could be in a dress and heels and their makeup perfect mm -hmm. and their hair perfect, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that they haven't just been assaulted. Don't you think society sort of does that? Mm -hmm. How sort of like the blaming you say they the do. expectation is, oh they should be a certain way. They we expect to see torn clothing mm -hmm. and you know sobbing and mm -hmm. that to us is an is a good victim you know to people in right, the society right. we expect mm -hmm. you know we expect that um, that awful crazy moment mm -hmm. but it, it most of the time is not like yeah, that it's not like that mm -hmm. and I'm guessing you probably really reinforce the confidentiality piece when oh, people yeah. call in that they can just talk perhaps and absolutely to... yeah we don't we don't even necessarily ask their name mm -hmm. um, we want to okay. let them know that they can talk to us confidentially that um, we're just there to tell them what their options are we don't we don't even push them in either direction if they say they absolutely don't want to report we say okay, and we will tell them the benefits of reporting, mm -hmm. but we, we don't want to push them in any push. direction because that can further traumatize them, and some people are just not, are just not able to do that. Yeah. Do you all have support groups that people who have gone through just the whole trauma to the actually reporting it, to dealing with the police and everybody, do you have some we way do. of, we you do. Do. Mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that? We have uh, groups for victims of sexual assault, and we have victims for, for people that have been abused as children. Okay. So um, okay. it may be that there are adults who have been abused as children, sexually abused as children. It may be teenagers that you know, have only recently been, been abused by perhaps a family member, a family friend, mm -hmm. or a stranger even. But yes, Good. we do have those groups um, ongoing as needed. 
Mm -hmm. And Wonderful. in Spanish as well? And in well? Spanish yeah. as oh, well, wow. yes. And we, we also provide groups for victims in the ADC, the Adult Detention mm -hmm. Center, oh, both really? male and female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. You guys do a lot. I do. <laughs> what does um, uh, someone who knows, have a family member or friend has been in, uh, assaulted and the, the friend doesn't want to report it, how might that close person provide support for them? What would you say to that? support person? The number one thing that we say to family members or friends is to believe them. So First of all. Mm -hmm. really that is number one. Um, if someone comes to you to, to say that they've been assaulted, no matter when it happened, mm -hmm. um, I, I think the most supportive thing you can do is say, I believe you. Wow. That's, it's a really, really powerful mm -hmm. thing to say to someone who it's this is that crime that people generally don't believe or generally want to blame mm -hmm. the victim so the best thing you can do is just give them support just listen to their story talk to them about it ask them what you can do to support them because it's okay. different everyone's different mm -hmm. some people want to they just want someone who's going to be near them who will sit with them um, you know when they're waiting to go into court or they just want someone to sit with them and watch TV um, but and then there are some people that actually want to talk through it with with family members or friends so it's really up to the victim to decide what the most important way is for them to get through that okay. that's kind of that empowering okay. piece isn't it mm -hmm. to, absolutely to because give you some choices right yeah. because in situations like this power has been taken away from the victim mm -hmm. so we'll and what we want to do is, is mm -hmm. encourage people to take it back yeah. and to have the victim be in control of some things okay okay um, just um, generally, what are some of the trends you're seeing, tr trends in general, in terms of in Prince William County? Okay, um, what I can say about trends, there are a few. One, of course, is we are seeing increase in male victims. Okay. So we're seeing more male victims in our office for services, either for adult sexual assault or for um, for adults who have been have been abused as children. We also do have teenagers that have been sexually abused. Um, so definitely an increase in male victims, both um, adult and minor. Mm -hmm. We see, um, I see a lot of alcohol involved assaults. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say that's a trend because I assume that that's just been happening for a very, very long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I don't want to victim blame and say, well, it's the alcohol, you shouldn't be mm -hmm. drinking. Yeah. Um, I had a young victim say to me once, um, you know, she should be able to be under the influence of alcohol and not get raped. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when she said that, it, you know, put the hairs on my arm up yeah. because I thought, wow, that's, it's, a, it's a powerful statement. She's mm -hmm. absolutely right. And a so, teenager. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. So male victims... Um, Victims where there have been where there has been alcohol involved, and then also we are seeing a lot of immigrants who are traveling to the country, oh, wow. um, you know, legally or illegally. It's mm -hmm. irrelevant. They're right. in that process of leaving their home country and coming into ours. They're experiencing sexual assault. Yeah. Do you guys see sexual tra tra trafficking in Prince William County? I don't know we do. You know we about do. That. Yes, yeah, and a lot too. of people that come to us as victims won't necessarily say that they've been trafficked. Trafficking oh, is not okay. even a word that people use very yeah. often. They just know that they have been assaulted in some wow. way. Mm -hmm. um, some people, when they're trafficked, they don't even know that they're being they trafficked. Don't they don't oh, know wow. about the exchange of money. They don't know about um, the things going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes. They just know they have to do what they're told. But yes, we, we do see victims of, of sex trafficking, mm -hmm. both minor and adult. Yeah, do, mm -hmm. and uh, do you all do anything with the police to do prevention or anything like that? Just well, um, there is a program in the schools where they are uh, telling the students, in some schools in our area, not all, mm -hmm. um, where they're talking to the students about what grooming looks like and mm -hmm. what would you do if your friend perhaps was, mm -hmm. if there's some red flag you know, um, behaviors of people that are being groomed or people that are being trafficked. So this presentation helps people know what to look for and how to help their friends. And also lets yeah. victims know that there are mm -hmm. people out there that can help you. 
Good. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get that word out, I'm so glad that you came to talk to us today about this because I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vicki, did you have any other things that you'd like to Just that say? this is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. It absolutely is. Okay. And if somebody wanted a presentation or more information, could they... Yes. Contact you. Contact. Absolutely. Yes. Seven zero three four nine seven one one nine two is the phone is the phone number to our offices, mm -hmm. and they can um, call and request a presentation. Um, any of our staff or volunteers can come out and talk mm -hmm. about sexual assault and sexual abuse. But I do I do have to say, our county is great in handling these things. You That's mentioned good. law enforcement officers, and um, they they really are the best bunch of detectives I have ever Wonderful. worked with, and. I watch them in awe sometimes the way that they're dealing with with victims because you know I'm trained to deal with victims oh, yeah. they m might be trained to work with victims but you know you always hear these horror stories about police working yeah. with victims mm -hmm. and that's just not the case that's in our county they, they are yeah. wonderful they and are. we are so so blessed to have them to yeah, work with. We have unique police officers yes, we do. here we sure in Fresno mm -hmm. County, mm -hmm. which is really good. Thank you so much for You're coming welcome. in and talking to us today. One last thing, what's the number for people to actually call if they need your help and they don't want to call the police right away? They can call our hotline, which is 703-368-4141. Okay. And if okay. they want to talk to us during um, business hours during the week, it is 703-497-1192. That's our office hours, but the, the, uh, the first phone number is 247-365. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so if you have any questions or you know of anyone who's been sexually abused or assaulted and you just have general questions or you want to make that call, please feel free to call those numbers. We will have those numbers listed at the end of the show today. Thank you for joining us.